G'day folks, it's Cortezarino. Today, I promise, we are doing the Super Smelter. That makes me feel sick. But before we do that, I wanted to share with you something interesting I found out about this building. You see, I actually watched a documentary about the Hagia Sophia, which is probably something I should have done before starting to build it. But I'm interested in it now, so I had a look. The interesting thing architecturally about this building is that they were trying to put a dome on top of a square building. Now that's important because domes are heavy, so you need a circular base around the bottom of the dome to support it all. But uh, this doesn't have the support. It's on top of a square. So how is that dome being held up? Well, they did it with these four arches because arches are super duper strong. So they are supporting the weight of that dome. But what happens when you put a whole lot of weight on top of an arch? Well, it, uh, it sort of squishes down and it comes out at the sides. So to stop it from getting squished, they put these huge supports on each side of the arches. So that's what these weird things are sticking out there to hold the arches in place. So they hold that one there and they uh, also fortify the edges of these ones in here. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm practically an architect now. So you can cue all the comments from actual architects now, guys. <laughs> so I've been doing a little bit more building on the inside, getting this place ready. Well, getting an idea of what it's going to look like so I know where to put the smelter, because I don't want to put it right in the middle here, because it will look terrible. So... All I've done really is I've done these two sides behind the pillars. So there's nothing up on the second story yet, but I've put a bit of a roof in here and then just decorated this room a little bit. It's it's not going to do anything. It's, it's just for looks. You can get in and out through there and they are exactly the same on each side. Other than that, I've been getting some of my storage in. So again, I wanted it sort of out of the way so where you're not really going to notice it. So I've put one of them in here. And that is a lot of storage, and I've been filling it up. I've got so much extra junk, but I've been reclaiming all my shulker boxes that I had all this stuff stored in, so that is pretty cool. So that's just for stones, and I've, I've got room to make four of these, so I can store lots and lots of stuff, like sandstone and glass. I've got tons of that. So the question is, where am I going to put my super smelter? Now, it's pretty long. It probably works out to be around 26 blocks long. So there's not many good spots for it. I was kind of considering, and we will need an ender pearl to see it. We still might do this. I'm not sure. I was considering putting it up along the wall there. I think it'll just squeeze in, and you're not going to see it. But... Uh, yeah, I don't really know if that's enough room. So the idea I'm sort of going with now is to put it above these archways. Now, I don't want it right up against these windows because then you'll see it from the outside and it'll look horrible. But uh, I'm sort of considering... I don't, I don't even know what I'm considering. Maybe up in the roof there, if it'll fit. There's a bit of a gap. I, I really don't know, actually. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Let's go into creative and... Have a look at the design I'm going to go for and do some actual measurements for it. So for this one, I didn't want to go with the typical minecart method where you have a minecart running across rails up the top and they just drop all the goodies into the hoppers and into the furnaces. So I wanted to go with a redstone design and this is sort of the typical one that uh, you see nowadays when an item gets to the last hopper the, uh, the comparator there will send a signal through, unlock the hoppers below, and theoretically there's an item in every hopper, and as soon as that happens they all drop down, and one of them goes into each furnace. I say theoretically because that does not work, because the speed of these items travel through the hoppers is a little bit inconsistent, and you're always going to miss one furnace. Let's, uh, let's dump some goodies in there and have a look. There they go. They all light up except for this one, which has nothing in it. And it doesn't even get the coal. You know, so if you're going to go for this super duper simple design, 
you're always going to miss one furnace. And I'm guessing another one doubles up. I'm not sure which one. I can't remember. So, like, it can be fixed, but you need to do some funny timing with this line of redstone. And luckily, I don't have to do that because Il Mango already has. Now, I can understand why a lot of people don't want to build this design. It looks overly complex, and it's not really. It's just a funny way of running the redstone signal. It's not like, like I couldn't remember it off the top of my head. I'd have to look at this as I'm building it. But uh, that's what you need to do if you're going to get uh, these to work. So I can quite understand a lot of people just going the simple design and not caring about that one furnace. I think it might actually work on Bedrock, actually. I've seen tutorials on bread Bedrock where that seems to be working. But on Java it doesn't. But uh, Il Mangas put a lot of thought into this design and apparently 23 furnaces is the perfect amount that this thing never backs up and you get the max efficiency so that's what I want to build, but it is huge, and actually it's a lot taller than I thought it was. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to measure this and think about where in the building I'm going to put it. Now you would think in a build this big, there would be somewhere where I could put this smelter, but guys, I have looked absolutely everywhere. And there is absolutely no place where it's not going to be an eyesore. You see, I kind of shot myself in the foot by making, by spending so much time trying to make this place look like the real Hagia Sophia and make it look good that now if I put a smelter up somewhere where it's going to go in front of a window or something and I, I can't do it because it's just going to ruin the look of the place. Because this smelter I want to build is so big, so... The only other option I have would be to make a staircase going down and then just build a room underground and put it there. But that kind of defeats the purpose of building this huge building in the first place. But never fear, Cortez has an idea. I am, I'm still going to build the big one, but I have come up with a much, much more appropriate place to build it. Not here in Persia, but somewhere else where it's going to help everyone on the server, and it's just going to make a lot more sense. But I still want to have a smelter in here, because that was the plan. So I'm just going to do the XP smelters, and I'm going to do two of them, and I think I'm going to tuck them into this little area here. So I've got one here, and an identical one on the other side, and this will be good, because I'll be storing sand and glass here as well, so I can... Just chuck it in and let it smelt away at a slow pace and just grab it whenever I want. So I am quickly going to throw these together and I'll show you the uh, the design I'm using. And it's, it's going to be weird. It's going to be more for looks than for functionality. And so if I ever need to refuel the fuel, I'll probably have to break a block to get in there. But uh, let me go get some materials. Okay, so it's going to look something like this, just nice and simple. You put your goodies in the top and they flow through the furnace down to the bottom. But uh, we also need fuel and we also want it to keep an item in the furnace. So at any time we can just grab it out of there and get the XP. And to keep it nice and simple, we're going to get it to keep an entire stack of items in there. When it's got nothing else to, to cook, it'll keep the last stack. So I've got some comparators up there running off the hoppers that are leading into the furnace. So as soon as there isn't another item to enter, I want this hopper down the bottom to lock. So I've got some repeaters set up, ready to go. And all we need to do is put a sticky piston. Is it there that I put it? Uh, no, it's not. I can't even remember how I built this. I did this in Creative Array. Let's put a light up there because at the moment, we have no spawning spaces, and uh, I don't want to make it. So I don't know if mobs can actually spawn on the back of pistons, but we will find out. Where do I want to think? Yeah, I think I don't even need a block above this. That comparator is going to power that piston, and we will put a redstone block there. So at the moment, nothing is going to flow out of there, but as soon as there are items in the hopper, the... Uh, that thing extends and the comparator unlocks that. But uh, there we go, and it's locked again. Not that we're smelting dirt, but any dirt left over would be left in there. 
I think you get the idea, but that is what we're doing. Nice and simple. But there is one other thing I want to do. You can see I've got some hoppers leading into the back of these furnaces for the fuel. But we've got comparators sitting on top. So we are going to use some sneaky Minecraft magic to be able to fill those hoppers up through the comparators. And it's actually pretty easy. So we are going to get a hopper minecart. Place him above the comparator. Break it. Break. Boom. And as soon as we put a chest on top here, the hopper minecart's going to pick up the items through the chest and then the hopper underneath the comparator is going to suck them through the hopper minecart. And that is how we can load this up ready to go with tons and tons of fuel. But like I said, I'm probably going to seal up this whole area. So if I want to come in here and access the chest later, I'll have to break a block. So let's get a chest in place and let's get it looking sort of neat, shall we? Don't bump the minecarts, cool. And we'll put a chest right there. So that is the design for the XP smelter with the weird fuel refilling, just so it can look nice and simple at the front. All right, I'm going to clean this up, build one on the other side, and then we are going to head off and build the mega smelter. I just realized my concrete powder to concrete converter is pretty awesome for using the fortune pick on all my coal ore. All right, both these are done and these furnaces right here are completely stocked up with coal. The, the two hoppers at the back with the two hopper minecarts on top of them and the double chest on top of that, they are all completely full. The other one isn't quite as full, but I ran out of coal. I thought I had so much coal. I thought I had more than I could ever use. And I actually do have more than I can ever use. I'm never going to use as much as I've got in here. The only problem is if I ever need coal blocks for building, I'm going to have to get into there to get them because I am completely out. But that doesn't matter because I haven't used coal for smelting in a long, long time. I've been using blaze rods. Which, uh, which kind of suggests to you where I have built the big super smelter. You know, once upon a time, this gold farm was the place to come to to get your XP and get your tools repaired. But uh, that was back when the server was in 1.12. Since we've updated to 1.13, something has happened. This place is not nearly as good as it used to be. There just seem to be less spawns, and it takes a lot longer to, uh, to get the XP. Now, Il Mango did a video very recently about some changes to mob spawning, and he said it shouldn't affect gold farms, but... I don't know. It, this There's something going on here. The gold farm is no longer the place to go, in my opinion. See, I used to prefer this over going to the Enderman farm, because it takes a lot longer to get to the Enderman farm, and then you've got to whack at the Enderman constantly, whereas this one, you can just stand here and look, all them are stuck. Can't even shoot them. Oh, that was probably a bad idea. Close that again. <laughs> so, yeah, I used to come here, even though it takes a little while to get up here, but, yeah, it's not... Not quite as good as it used to be, so I have been going to the Blaze Farm because that is super easy because I take a lot of breaks when I play Minecraft. If you ask any of my server members, I'm constantly logging off. So instead of logging off, I just sit at the Blaze Farm. When I come back, I've got a ton of Blaze. So that's why I've been using Blaze Rods constantly. I have tons and tons of them. And the blaze farm is a lot quicker for me to get to as well. If I want to get to the gold farm, I've got to go to the top of the tree there and up through the bedrock. Whereas the blaze farm is just at the end of this hallway and there is my base right there. So I don't have to go very far at all. I just run in the portal and I'm here. So the blaze farm is on the right hand side. It's a double my cake design, which is super cool. I love it. So I've had to knock out my Mona Lisa painting and I'll fix this arch up later. It's it's all netherrack in here at the moment, but I've put it in. Now, always my preferred block to put redstone on in the overworld is just stone bricks. I've got tons of it and I know not to break it if I'm digging around and I come across it. In the nether, I either use the nether brick 
Or even better is the red nether brick, because when the redstone isn't lit up, you can't even see it. It's pretty cool. But this is where I've put my smelter in. Now you notice I've got a few levels here. So we've got a level up the top for throwing things in. So you've got your input, then the blaze rods, and then here's the shulker boxes. So you put your shulker boxes full of stuff to smelt up the top, and then the empty ones come out there. And I've done it on levels because if I was to put uh, the output up here as well, I'd have to send everything into a dropper item elevator and bring it up and yeah, bring it over to here. And this is 23 furnaces. So if you're using this, you're doing a big smelting job and I don't want a dropper constantly dropping, causing lag, to just, just to bring things up. So instead, we're just going to walk down a few levels and we've got our output down here. Now, just in case you want to try this design, I will show you the shulker box unloader I've used and how I connected it to this thing. Now, I have no idea if this is a reliable shulker box unloader. It's by Palapala, so it probably is, but it was from a year ago, so who knows. But uh, yeah, let's jump into Creative World and I'll show you how I joined those together. So this is Palapala's shulker box unloader. I'll put the link to his tutorial in the description, but I didn't follow, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just looked at this and I was able to build it from that. So it's it's pretty cool. You put your sugar boxes in the dispenser. Everything that uh, gets emptied goes into this chest. And then when that is completely empty, the piston pushes it over and the sugar box ends up in this chest. But I had to join that design to where did I put it where's the Hagia Sophia there it is I had to join that onto this big monstrosity so how did I do it exactly okay so we've got the let's just make sure this is set up correctly yes it is uh, I might break it and we'll do it from the start so if you follow Ilmago's design for the super smelter and I'll put the link in the description for that as well you'll end up with something like this so what I've done for the input chest for things you're smelting i put it on the angle like that, and then for the coal, i put another hopper into that chest and a double chest right there. Then for the empty shulker boxes, I've got another double chest here, and what I've done is I've run one hopper into the input chest, one into the empty shulker boxes, and then another hopper leading into that one that's going into the empty shulker boxes. So if you follow Palapala's tutorial, the, uh, the two hoppers are these two here. So that one's accepting all the items that are getting emptied, and this one's accepting the empty shulker boxes. All right, guys, we are going to leave it here for today. I still have to decorate that room with the super smelter. It's all netherrack. It looks pretty horrible. But I'm going to do that off camera because I have another project that I am itching to get to. Now, if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I always do my tutorials and I've always got a Let's Play series of some description going. But every now and then, I do another series on the side. And that is what I am itching to get to. And once again, of course, we are dusting off my old buddy Dragon Tech. It, it's not another series without Dragon Tech. It's, it's just not. It's just not. So cheers, guys. Look forward to this. I'm looking forward to a lot. Some very different to what I've done before, but, uh, but then again, not so different. Still Minecraft, but, <laughs> but you'll see. You'll see. Um, I might not even describe exactly what I'm doing. I might just release the first video without much of a description, and you guys can figure it out for yourselves. All right, that's it from me, guys. I've got to run. Cheers. I'm Cortez Reno. I'll see you later.